she thinks while she's doing it, if you actually know what the scripture this month is. So you don't know it. So we're going to be handing these out to you every week so you know what the scripture is for this month. So, so I'm going to read it to you so you kind of know it already if you get it, okay? This is Ephesians 2.19. What's the scripture for the month? This month we're all Ephesians 2.19. Wait, wait, this month we're all This month. We are in July. Are we starting? Are we starting, Pastor KK? Hello, thank you for watching us here. We're on Instagram, and this is Rise Up Youth Ministry. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Alright, scripture for the month is now passed out, just about passed out. It is Ephesians 2.19. Yeah, right? It says this in Ephesians 2.19, this is King James Version. So I'm going to break it down after I say it. Now therefore you, say you. You. No, you say I. I. Okay. You are no more a stranger or a foreigner, but you are a fellow citizen with the saints. Say saints. Saints. Of the house of of God. Say, house of God. House, house of God. God. We're going to act this whole story out, okay? Now, to break it down, it basically is saying this. So now, I am not a stranger or a foreigner, but I'm a citizen with all of God's holy people, and I'm members of God's family. So I want you to get after me. This applies to you. I am. I am. A fellow member. A fellow member. With the saints. With the saints. In the house of God. In the house of God. Let's try this again. Put your paper down. I am, I am a fellow member of the saints in the house of God. Very good. Okay, so that's the scripture, okay? That's your paper to keep. It tells you what the scripture is, which is Ephesians. 2 It tells you what to say. Okay? Because you're making it personal. Now we're going to act this out. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. What is a saint? I want somebody to come up here and show me what a saint looks like to you. You want to try this? What is your name, young lady? Caitlin's going to demonstrate a saint. This is her demonstration of a saint. Thank you very much, Caitlin. So, the guys who think they can demonstrate what a saint looks like. <laughs> Just a girl, huh? Okay, Patrick. Patrick's demonstration of what a saint looks like. You ready? Let's see what he's got. What's he got? He's down, he's down. Okay, okay. Any other guys want to give it a shot? Any guys in the house want to give it a shot? What does a saint look like? So a lot of us think we know what a saint is. This is what a saint is. You ready? The word saint means set apart for God. It is somebody who is set apart. Let's demonstrate that. Let me get a couple of actors up here that are from a family. Please face everybody. Show us set apart. Show us set apart. Set apart. That's set apart, right? So they're set apart for who, though? God. Set apart for God. That's what the word saint means. Stand here. It also means to be exclusively his. So, this is what a saint is. They're not somebody who was always pure or always holy. Come together. At one point, they were set apart. They weren't always pure. They were not always, always holy. You get that? A saint is not somebody who is necessarily Pure, they were purified. Something happened to them to set them apart. What happened to them to set them apart? God. God happened to them. Once again, she said sibling rivalry. I like that. We'll come together. What did they do when they first came up there, right? They almost like pushed each other away, right? Right? Yeah. Do what you did with us. Do what you did. Right. Do what Sibling rivalry. It's 
not about being separated because of sibling rivalry. It's because God separated you or you separated for God. Got it? It's not about being pure, but purified. I separated for God. It's not about being innocent, but being forgiven and transformed. Say transformed. Transform. We're going to see what that looks like by the time we're done with this. To really change something, you've got to change it from the inside. I'm going to say something about everybody's family here. We have a family right here. They want you to come up on the come so oh, okay. Show me the family. Come on, the family's coming up. Demonstrate that. You're God. Move over. 
You're somebody who's out there. How would you demonstrate that God loved them first? Unless he, the Bible says nobody comes to God unless God draws them to himself. How would you act that out? <laughs> Get over here. I love you. Get over here. Okay, he's trying. I died for you. There we go. There we go. Say it. I died for you. Get over here. All right. All right. Okay. So I'm comparing a relationship between two people and a relationship with God. Y'all get that? Next scene. When you get closer to the relationship, is this really tough for you? Yes, it is. You begin to see them regularly. How would you act that out? You begin to see somebody regularly. Once again, their family and the social distancing thing is cool. Now we're going to act it out with God. You're over there, you're over there, you're over there. You were ready to do it, I should. You start going to Bible study or going to youth group. You're getting closer. Let's read this. <laughs> okay, next one. In a relationship, you commit to see them only. How would you act that out? Tunnel vision. Just you. Just you. All right. With the Lord, you would make more of a commitment. You might start going to church on Sunday. Not just coming to youth group, but you would actually start going to church on Sunday. On a Sunday. Very good. You're almost done. It's going to get a little closer now. Ready? <laughs> and you get more closer in a relationship, you would get engaged. That means you're saying you're the one for me. Very good. What would that mean as far as a relationship with God? It would mean this. You get saved. You give your heart to Jesus. You commit yourself to him and nobody else. Next part in relationship, what would happen next? This could take years in relationship, but what would happen next? Marriage, Marriage would happen next. So, you would get married. <laughs> I think it goes on the left hand. Left hand. Left hand. I don't know why. We're good. Okay. So now when you get married, how is that closer, you think? You guys should try to answer this if you want. How is that closer than giving your heart to Jesus? How would that be even closer in a relationship with God? You're only committing to them. You're only going to love them with all your heart. Okay. Let me build the question at you one more time. How is something closer than giving your heart to Jesus when a relationship with God? How is something closer than that that's like getting married? This is a little bit of a trick question, but we've covered this before, so let's see if we can get it. Jesus is your Savior. Give me a hint. Jesus is my Savior, but a deeper relationship is what? Jesus is my... Who said that? Somebody said Lord first. Who said Lord first? You cheaters in the back. Thank you very much. <laughs> you said Lord, right? Yes, you did. You yes, copied them and said Lord. Jesus. All right, have a seat, you guys, real quick. Come in here and tell me what that means. What is the difference between Jesus being your Savior and Jesus being... This is really deep. What is the difference between Jesus being your Savior and Jesus being your Lord? It's a lot like a deeper commitment. So in your heart, what does that mean? Um, that you serve Him and Him only. There is a relationship where if we're married and we're in love, you want to come up? Want to be married and in love with? Woo! It's all gooey and stuff, right? It's gooey, I love you. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> but when you get married, guess what? You put up with the sweat and rocket. Yep, when you get married, <laughs> you put up with stuff. That was really good. She just said you put up with the sweat in this hairy armpit. You have to put up with things from the other person. 
Um, you don't make decisions by yourself anymore, do you? No, it's a two-part decision making. Mm -hmm. But I listen to you. So <laughs> get the difference? Jesus is my Savior. I love you. I love you. Jesus is my Lord. I'm going to serve you. Get it? It's a deeper commitment. Marriage is a deeper commitment. I cannot make my own decisions. I make them with you. You. I don't know if you guys got that. You know? Did you know that's how marriage is? It's not you alone. I'm, honey, I'm, I'm taking off. Where? I'm not telling you where. <laughs> when are you going to be back? I've got to tell you. That doesn't happen in a marriage. It doesn't happen in a good marriage. Very good. Jesus is your Lord. You start to serve him. Now, here's what can happen. It happens in our society a lot. And this is something that people think that they can do with God because they do it with each other. And they're doing a lot right now in our society. Um, when two people go through that process, remember it's a comparison of a relationship and comparison, comparison our relationship with God. And all of a sudden, something happens in the relationship and they decide, even if they're married, they decide they're gonna, they're gonna cancel each other. <laughs> I cancel you. Do, a, do, do, the, do the cancel thing. What would it look like? I cancel you. I cancel you. Very good. Very good. Thank you, guys. Hashtag whatever. I cancel you. Can you cancel a relationship with God? In other words, you gave your heart to Jesus. He became your Savior and your Lord. Can you cancel God? No. Nobody thinks you can do that? You can, but does God cancel you out? He does not. The Bible says that God is married to the backslider. That means even if the person says, I cancel you. I'm not happy with this relationship. I cancel. I like the way you treated me. Cancel you or divorce you. God is married to the backslider. He will not divorce you. So this is about being a saint, and this is about God's what? Uh, you forgot already, huh? God's household. God's household. Now, what is God's household? It is people. Huh? Yes, God's household is you, people. Get ready to act out the family. Oh, you guys haven't done anything yet, have you? Yeah, okay. Make them, make them back. So people think they can cancel relationships. But you can't cancel God, can you? God comes with who? The household. Very good. God comes with his people. You can't cancel God's people either. You can't do it. It doesn't work. Can't cancel God? You can't cancel his people. Let's show a household. We need a, a demonstration of a household. Who thinks they can do a household? You can't do it by yourself, okay? You, you want to give this a shot? I'll let you guys come up here and try to show a household, okay? Think about it. Think about what's in a household. You ready to try it out? All right, here we go. The brothers, the brothers showing the household. Here they come. Like everyday household? No, just, I'm going to ask you the question. Ready? Okay. You're a household, right? You demonstrate a household, right? Okay, already we have a member of the household. What member are you? Okay, we will not repeat what he said. Okay. <laughs> he said he's the greedy one in the household. I'm going to call him the child, okay? That'll work, okay? Who are you in the household? I'm the loner. In a household, there are parents. Got it? Oh, right. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Don't no, no, tell him what he is. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. Don't tell him what he is. You don't have to be the mom. Who else would you be in the household? He is one of the children. I'm giving you a clue. He's one of the children. He might be the... Which one are you? I'm the man. Older brother. 
He's the house, he's the dad already, so where would you be in the household? One more time. Okay, one of the sons, right? Second son, very good. Have a seat, you guys. Did a good job. One hand applause, bro. That's all they got. Okay. In the household, there are parents and there are children and there are different ages, correct? There's the oldest, sometimes there's a middle, lots of middle, and there's the youngest. That's a household, correct? Y'all fit in there someplace, right? Everybody, every single one of you fit in that someplace. You can all relate to this, right? You can relate to this. Let's see how with it you are. I am a fellow member with, with the saints in the house of God. Very good. You guys are getting it. We just had a demonstration of a household. Now, I'm going to read a little bit about what a household will be like. A parent is in your house. Their job is to nurture you and guide you and love you, but not to be your buddy or your friend. That's not their job, to be your best friend. Their job is to guide you and nurture you and to love you. And then you have other people in the household. Some are older and some are the baby. Any, any babies in the household here? Okay, we've got a baby in the household. My wife is a baby in her household. KK, you with Pastor KK was a baby in his household. You're the baby in your household. We got it. Any firstborns in here? There we go. Jabari, number one. Frederick, number one. Joshua, number one, right? Okay. All right. I want one of you number ones to tell me what your responsibility is in the household. Okay. Frederick said take care of the, others, the younger siblings. In what way are you supposed to do that? I don't know if you love them or nurture them and teach them life lessons, but you are an example to them. Say that one more time. You're an example to them because they're going to look at you as the older one and decide whether or not what you did was something that's worth following or something that's foolish. Is that right? Who's some middle, middle and younger ones here? Is what I just said right? You watch the older one and see what happens to them? Very good. Very good. Come up here and say that. Because I'm a middle. I'm a middle. Me too. I'm a middle. Oh, and what do we do with the older ones? Chocolate. Watch them mess up and do everything wrong. That's not exactly what, what she said the first time. Yeah. We basically watch them to see if what they did was something worth following or not. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very true. 100%. Okay. What did you want to say? Go ahead, Cody. Yeah, basically, you're responsible to set an example for them. I'm going to say it again. If you're older, you're responsible to set an example for them. I'm not just making this up. This is in the Bible, but I won't get into it. But the oldest one in the household, the Bible says, is holy to the Lord. What does holy mean? Oh, what is um, a, they're a saint. What does the saint mean? They're set apart. And they're purified. Guess who's going to deal with life first in the household out of the kids? The oldest. They got to deal with everything first. That's why they make mistakes. Those of us who are second, third place, we kind of benefit from their mistakes if we're smart. But they have to deal with everything first. That's kind of tough. The Bible says it's a, a holy place. A, there is like a saint, you're set apart. But back to the story. So, I want to bring this point across to you. You can't cancel who? God. You can't cancel his people or his house either. Can you cancel your brothers or your sisters? Because you're related by what? Blood. Can you cancel blood? No. You have no power over that. You can't cancel it. 
It bear your blood. You had no choice in the matter. Pretty strong tie, huh? Pretty strong relationship, isn't it? That's, if you have no choice in the matter, that's your family. You, in a way, you're what? Kind of stuck, right? Get along, or you might as well try to get along, because that's the blood, right? That, that relationship is that close. Okay, you guys got this picture pretty good. I'm going to say some things out of the Word of God that relates to this, so get ready for it. Now, we have a lot of family members here. You guys are brothers in the back, right? You guys are brothers. Yeah. We're stepbrothers. Stepbrothers still. That means you're related by what? Blood. You're related by blood. We're, we're related by our, our You're right, by marriage. Somebody else got married. Thank you. I was never good at that, stepbrothers and stuff like that. Let me go on with this, what I'm better at. So God's house is like your house. Whose house are we in right now? <laughs> God's house, right? It's a house just like your house. He's got leaders in it, and their job is supposed to nurture you and help you help you grow and mature. That's our job. You can't cancel them because you disagree with them. You're still going to have to deal with leaders. Do you have to deal with leaders in your own house? Yes. Will you have to deal with leaders in your life? Yes. What are some leaders you're going to have to deal with in your life? Your boss. Very good. Go ahead. You're going to say the boss? Anybody else? What is Teachers, very good. You will have to deal with them. You see how God set this up? He made it just like your household, so you'll know how to deal with things. Anybody else want to name any of the leaders that you've got to deal with? You can't just cancel them. You have to learn to deal with them. Who else? Brothers. Okay, that's the household. Okay, youth leader. Anybody else you want to name? Coaches, very good. Parent is the leader in the house. I was going to throw the word, this word out there that's government. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Government. Leadership. God has put it out there for us. Now, let me get back to this. This is, uh, this is first John. If I'm wrong, help me out, leaders. This should be First John. I don't have the scripture in front of me, but I believe it is First John. Let me say the verse, and if somebody finds it, help me out here, because I don't think I have it actually written. The verse says this, if a man says, I love God, say, I love God. If a man says, I love God, and, I, and yet they hate their brother, this person is a liar. Say it again. 1 John 4.20. Thank you. 1 John 4.20. The man say, I love God and hate his brother. He is a liar. For he that loves his loves not his brother who he can see. How can he say he loves God who he has never even seen? Has anybody here ever seen God? But you, do you love God? Yeah. And you've never even seen him. Now think about your brother or your sister. The Bible is basically saying you're looking at God's creation. Go ahead and look at your brother or your sister right now. I'm your brother. I can't see God, but I can see you. I am looking at God's creation. If a man say he loves God and hates his brother, he's a liar. How can you say you, you love God who you can't see, and yet you look at your brother who you can see. God created your family member. This is verse 21, 1 John 4, 21. This is the commandment we have for him. him. This is a what? Commandment. That was good. You tried to jump on what I said earlier. This is the commandment. Ready for the commandment? What's a commandment mean? You got to do it. It's a command, right? Thank you. Here's the command. You guys are doing a good job ministering. This is the commandment that we have from him. That he who loves God loves his brother also.
What would it mean to love your brother? Somebody show me what that means. <laughs> Demonstrate that, please. <laughs> All three of them, all three of them got to come up to show the love of love their brother. Go ahead. Aww. Aww. Take a picture, take a picture. That's not what he did. That's not what he did earlier. Let me see. He put his brother in a headlock is what he did earlier. <laughs> but it was an affectionate headlock. All right. <laughs> First John 5, 3. This is the love of God. What does that mean, the love of God? This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. What does that word mean? They're not grievous. It doesn't grieve me to keep his commandment. Does it grieve you to love your brothers? It does. <laughs> it does sometimes, doesn't it? It doesn't? Sometimes. In other words, it's hard to do. So I'll say it all together. This is the commandment, I'm sorry, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not hard. God gives us his love through his son Jesus, so we can keep them, so we can love people. Now this is the last verse, and Corey's gonna help me with this. Come on, Corey! Corey, 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 Corey. I need somebody to um, hold the mic. A leader can hold the mic. Want to do it? I don't have my mic. This is the verse. I want you to get this. Pay attention to this, okay? Because we're going to act out this verse for you. Y'all looking at me? Yeah. Are you looking? Mm -hmm. This is the verse in the Bible, and it says this. The last verse. God sets the solitary in families, where God puts the lonely in families. God will put you in a family if you're by yourself. He will put you in a family. It might be the house of God family, but he'll put you in a family. He brings out, this is the part I want you to pay, pay attention. He brings out those who are bound with chains. He brings out those who are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. In other words, those who say, God, I cancel you. I divorce you. Or God's people or people, I cancel you. That's being rebellious. And you will live in a dry land, which means you will not prosper. The Bible says, obey your parents. For this is right before God. And then it says, it's the first commandment with a promise. If you obey your parents, this is the promise. It will be well with you. That means you will prosper. I didn't say all parents are perfect. My mom and dad divorced. My dad left when I was seven. When my mom tried to get me to still call him up, still try to have a relationship with him, I was supposed to respect him still. She wanted me to, and I did. The promise is what? So I was honoring him, right? Honor your parents. Honor your father and mother, because then it will be well with you. In other words, you will prosper. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. They're not going to prosper. So when it act out this verse about God takes the lonely or the solitary and he puts them in a family, have a family come up here who would be the family. No, you're a, you wouldn't be the good family. Okay. I'll pick these guys again. Okay. You're going to be a family. You're just going to stand off to uh, just to the side here. Right there. Back up just a little bit. You're a family. Okay. And Corey, I'm going to bring you into the family. Did you bring the props? So I'm God and I'm going to put him into a family. But the second part about the verse, I'm using chains because the verse we just read says, he takes those that are bound with chains. I have the verse. 
<laughs> Sorry, sir. You got the shirt on, good. Check this out. He brings out those who are bound with chains. He brings them out. Now watch this. You can turn around for it, face the camera. He's gonna be bound with a chain. There's one more prop, and that's a red thing. Now some of us look at our lives like this. We say to ourselves this. I'm this way because of my father. I can't help being the way I am because it's in my DNA. You're found with a chain. My whole family is like this. I can't help it. We're just like this. That's a lie. It's a lie when it comes to this chain right here. This chain represents our blood. It may be your background. It may be a creed, a, a color. It may be a race. Remember, we're bound by blood in our families, right? Did we get to choose our families? No. We didn't get to choose them. It binds us. We can't help it. Some of us use it as an excuse. This is a chain that represents the blood of Jesus. Sorry. Blood comes in a strand. Did you know that? Your DNA is in a strand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? DNA is in a strand. It looks like a strand. It is in a chain. DNA represents your blood. If I had a drawing, I'd show it to you. But it looks like a chain. He brings out those who are bound with chains. He uses his own blood to take off of you that excuse. This is the way my dad is. This is the way my family is. And God uses his own chain of his own blood to take it off of you. To break the chain that's upon you. He loosens that person and he puts them in a what? His blood is stronger than any chain. The blood of Jesus is stronger than any chain. He takes those who are lonely and bound with chains, bound with a chain of his own, his own chain, his blood, he breaks off any curse, anything, that, any excuse. So nothing is stronger than the blood of Jesus. Even the blood of our own family members, the blood of Jesus is stronger. Can any of you relate to that in this room? And I know some of the leaders can because I know their personal stories. Where the blood of Jesus came in and changed things, and even we're in the household, but I won't get into all that. But if you're take a seat, you guys, good job. But if you're rebellious, if your answer is, God, I cancel you. I cancel you, God's. God's leaders, I cancel you. The Bible says you will dwell in a dry land. You'll dwell where there's no prosperity. But the blood of Jesus brings prosperity to you. Nothing is stronger than the blood of Jesus. Praise God. That was our lesson for tonight. Hallelujah. And, uh, I really enjoyed the actors. Thank you, you guys, for being brave enough to do that. We want to thank you guys for choosing us tonight. And God bless you. In Jesus' name.